Hello, and welcome to Sustainer Step, your free guide to everything sustainability. I'm Karam, and today we're plunging into a critical subject in the sustainability sphere. We're going to demystify Scope 3 emissions and enlighten you about its significance in the corporate world. These emissions, often overlooked, can have a profound impact on your business carbon footprint. So, if you're ready to take a step towards a more sustainable future, join me as we dive into the process of calculating Scope 3 emissions. Before we dive into the calculations, it's crucial to understand what Scope 3 emissions are. You might already be familiar with Scope 1 and Scope 2 emissions. Scope 1 covers all direct emissions from the activities of an organization or under their control. These include fuel combustion on sites such as gas boilers, fleet vehicles and air conditioning leaks. Scope 2, on the other hand, accounts for indirect emissions from the generation of purchased electricity, steam, heating and cooling consumed by the reporting company, but what about Scope 3 emissions? These are all indirect emissions that occur in a company's value chain. They are not from directly owned or controlled sources. They can be upstream, such as emissions from extracting and producing purchased materials, or downstream, like emissions from the use of sold products or services. Why are Scope 3 emissions important for businesses to consider? Well, for starters, they often represent the largest portion of a company's carbon footprint. They can account for up to 90% of total emissions. That's a significant chunk. Secondly, addressing Scope 3 emissions can help businesses identify efficiency improvements and cost savings. It can also boost corporate reputation and provide a competitive advantage. After all, who doesn't want to lead the charge in sustainability? Thirdly, Scope 3 emissions are increasingly under the spotlight from investors, customers and regulators. They want businesses to report on and reduce these emissions. Knowing your Scope 3 emissions can help meet these demands and avoid potential future liabilities. Finally, understanding and managing Scope 3 emissions can drive innovation. It can lead to the development of new, lower carbon products and services. This not only helps reduce emissions, but also opens up new market opportunities. So it's clear that Scope 3 emissions are much more than just numbers. They are a critical part of a business's sustainability journey. They provide insights into a company's environmental impact and help identify opportunities for improvement. Now that we have a clear understanding of what Scope 3 emissions are, let's move on to how we can calculate these emissions. The first step in calculating Scope 3 emissions is identifying the sources of these emissions. You see, Scope 3 emissions are quite expansive, encompassing all other indirect emissions that happen in a company's value chain. This means they can come from a variety of categories beyond your immediate control. To help you better understand, let's delve into some of these categories. Firstly, we've purchased goods and services. This refers to the emissions generated in the production of goods and services bought by your company. For example, if you're a restaurant owner, this would include emissions from the farming, processing and transportation of the ingredients you use. Next, we have transportation and distribution. This category includes emissions from the transportation of company goods at any stage of the product life cycle, whether it's raw materials being transported to your company or finished products being transported to your customers. For instance, if you own a clothing brand, this would cover emissions from shipping the clothes from your warehouse to retail outlets. Then we have waste generated in operations. This refers to emissions from the disposal of waste produced by your company. If you're a manufacturer, this could include emissions from disposing of scrap material or wastewater. Keep in mind that these are just a few examples. Scope 3 emissions can also come from business travel, employee commuting, investments, and even leased assets, among others. The key thing is to look at your company's operations from a holistic perspective to identify all potential sources of emissions. Remember, identifying your Scope 3 emission sources is not a one-time task. It's a continuous process as your operations evolve and as more scientific data becomes available. It's also an opportunity to discover areas for improvement and innovation in your sustainability efforts. Once you've identified your Scope 3 emission sources, you can move on to the next step, which is data collection. The second step in calculating Scope 3 emissions involves gathering data related to these emission sources. Now, what kind of data you may ask? Well, the type of data needed primarily depends on the sources of emissions you've identified in Step 1. 
This could include anything from energy consumption records, transportation logs, waste management data, to even business travel records. The key is to gather as much detailed and relevant data as possible. But where do you find this data? In most cases, it's right under your nose. Check your company's records, invoices, purchase receipts, or any other relevant documentation. For instance, utility bills can provide detailed information about energy consumption, while transportation logs can shed light on fuel usage. For some emission sources, you might need to reach out to your suppliers or partners. For example, if you're looking at emissions from purchased goods, you might need to request information from your suppliers about their manufacturing processes. Remember, it's important to maintain a good relationship with your partners to facilitate this data collection process. Now, let's talk about the elephant in the room, the importance of accurate data collection. Accuracy is key. The more accurate your data is, the more precise your emissions calculations will be. This means you'll have a clearer understanding of your environmental impact and be better equipped to make informed decisions about how to reduce it. Keep in mind, however, that data collection for Scope 3 emissions can be complex and time-consuming. But don't let this discourage you. It's a necessary step towards achieving your sustainability goals. And remember, you're not alone in this journey. There are many resources and tools available to assist you in this process. Consider using software tools that can automate data collection and ensure consistency. This can save you a lot of time and reduce the risk of errors. But whatever approach you choose, be diligent and thorough. Your efforts will definitely pay off in the long run. With your data in hand, you're now ready to move on to the calculation phase. The third and final step in calculating scope three emissions is the calculation itself. Now that we've collected our data, let's dive into the calculation. In essence, calculating scope three emissions is a matter of multiplying the activity data by the corresponding emission factor. Let's illustrate this with a simple example. Suppose your business has taken a flight from London to New York. The activity data in this case would be the distance of the flight, which is approximately 3,500 miles. The emission factor for this kind of flight would be the amount of CO2 emitted per mile flown. So, to calculate the emissions for this flight, you would multiply the distance by the emission factor. It's important to note that emission factors can vary depending on a wide range of factors, such as the type of aircraft used, the fuel efficiency of the aircraft, and even the altitude at which the flight took place. Therefore, it's crucial to use the most accurate emission factor available for your specific situation. This process is repeated for every activity data you've collected, and the results are then added together to give the total scope three emissions. But it's not just about the numbers. It's about understanding where these emissions are coming from and how they can be reduced. This kind of insight gives businesses the power to make informed decisions about their sustainability strategies. It's also worth mentioning that there are online tools and software available that can automate this process, making it easier and more accurate. However, understanding the underlying principles of the calculation is crucial for making sense of the results and for planning effective emission reduction strategies. Remember, the goal is not just to calculate the emissions, but to understand them. To see where the biggest contributors are and to find ways to reduce them. Because every step we take towards sustainability, no matter how small, is a step in the right direction. And there you have it. That's how you calculate scope three emissions. Calculating scope three emissions may seem complex, but with the right approach, it's a task any business can undertake. Let's recap what we've covered today. First, we identified the sources of scope three emissions. Remember, this is a broad category that includes all indirect emissions that occur in the value chain of your business, from the production of purchased materials to the use of sold products. Next, we talked about data collection. This step is crucial. Gathering precise and accurate data is the foundation of your calculations. It involves tracking down information about every stage of your product life cycle. And yes, it can be a bit of a detective work, but it's worth it. Finally, we delved into the calculation process. Using the gathered data and applying it to recognized emission factors, we can estimate our scope three emissions. This gives us a clearer picture of our environmental impact and shows us where we can make improvements. This three-step process, 
though it may seem daunting at first, is an essential part of achieving your sustainability goals. Understanding and managing your scope. Three emissions is not just about ticking a box for corporate social responsibility. It's about making real, tangible changes that benefit our planet. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe to Sustain a Step for more free sustainability tips and guides. And if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. It really helps the channel grow. Until next time, keep taking steps towards sustainability.